Praise the Lord. Pastor Forbes, we never plan right, but we dress. We're twins this morning. <laughs> From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all. Can I get a witness? From my heart to the Jesus be the center. All about you. This is all about From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. All about you. Yes, it's all. Centered all about you. Let's sing it again from my heart to the heavens. Jesus be the center. It's all about yes. It's all from my heart, from my heart to the heavens. Jesus be the center, it's all about you, yes, it's all about you. Every knee shall bow. I wanted to think about that for a second. Every knee. Do you know anybody that's pompous? and proud and wicked. It doesn't matter who you are. There's coming a day when every knee shall bow and declare that Jesus Christ. Oh, what a day. What a day that will be, Erica, when rich and poor, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Saddam Hussein, Adolf Hitler, Donald Trump, George Bush, Madeline Forbes, Glenn Roy Dent, Erica and Robert Young shall have to. And declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. us to focus today on how Jesus has redefined reality. I was talking to my students and I was sharing with them we were reading Julius Caesar and in the narrative David White who wrote the article he said that it was Julius Caesar was born in BCE 100. And I reminded them that prior to this redefinition of time division, it used to be 100 BC, meaning 100 years before Christ. But men are now trying to get rid of Christ. So instead of it being 100 BC before Christ, it's now 100 BC. BCE, before the common era, because they want to get rid of Christ. But prior to that, Jesus divided time. Everything that happened before he was born 
was considered BC and everything after was AD. I know Dominia in the year of our Lord. It is now something else. It's ACE after the common era. But Jesus has redefined reality. And I want to share with you this morning how Jesus has redefined the family. I want to challenge your thinking. I want you to look around this room. And I'm going to read the scripture. And as you look around the room, I want you to look around the room as I read. Matthew 12, verse 46 says, While he was still talking to the multitudes, behold his mother and brothers. You all know Jesus had brothers and sisters, right? His mother and brothers stood outside seeking to speak with him. Then one said to him, Look, your mother, yeah, the one who held you, carried you, fed you from her breasts while you were giving her a life to feed yourself. What a God. That mother, Mary by name. Someone say Mary. And your brothers are standing Outside, seeking to speak with you. But, somebody say, yes, he said, but. He answered and said to the one who told him who is unnamed in the text. Isn't it amazing how so many people show up in the scriptures and we never know who they are. Do you know you can be insig you can be overlooked but not insignificant? The one who told him. He said to the one who told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand towards, I told you to look around. Malvo, man, this arm, touch it, Jesus. He, 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 he stretched out his hand. Stretch out your hand, CJ. Stretch, stretch out your hand. Remember, I told you to look around. I, I didn't just give you instructions because I didn't have none to say. Stretch out your hand. And he stretched out his hand towards who? His disciples. Beautiful job, girls. Beautiful job. He stretched out his hand towards his disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whosoever does the will of God, the will of my father in heaven, is my brother and my sister. And my mother. I'd like to speak into your hair and tell your neighbor, neighbor, the spirit is thicker than blood. Tell somebody behind you, the spirit is thicker than blood. Father, speak to us this morning on this Mother's Day for the next 33 minutes. Minister into our hearts and our spirits in Jesus' name. On your way down, don't touch my, don't touch my brother. Come on, tell somebody, don't touch my brother. Don't touch my brother. I'd like to greet everyone in the name of the Lord. I'd just like to single out a few people. Um, welcome back, Michael. That's brother Michael right there. I love you, my brother. And I'm so delighted to welcome, after a short vacation, Brother Lloyd Smith is in the house today. 
please stand, Brother Lloyd, that Sister Cadian's husband and Caleb's father. Come on, Pastor Caleb, stand with your daddy, see. But Brother Lloyd, that is Pastor Caleb. Amen. We celebrate you, Brother Lloyd. We hope to see you next Sunday. Amen. And to Brother Kimani in the house all the way from Tampa. He come to celebrate Mother's Day with his mother. And, you know, he has to come support the house of the Lord. Amen. And Sister Weber's sister, I didn't get your name. Grace. Oh, you. Oh, this is the one and only Grace. Man, we heard about Grace every day. Twice every day we hear about Sister Grace. We welcome you to Togak. We love you. Come on, let's celebrate Sister Grace. Amen. And uh, the track star is at the back. I forget her name. Marsha, is it? And her mom is here. Praise the Lord. Can we thank God for our visitors at the back? Amen. Amen. You're going to hear her name one day along with Shelly Ann Fraser Price, that young lady back there. Can we celebrate her? 800 and 1500 meter runner from Jamaica. We thank God for her. And all of you who make up God's uh, uh, family, we, we want to let you know we love everybody here and told like his family. And, and we want to thank God for Sister Maureen. You're back in the house. We're so sorry for the loss of your mom. We know how much she meant to you. I was talking to Minister um, elect Jaquan. And I told him how grateful we are he was able to represent us. I told Jaquan that that's what we want, that he showed up there. And he says, I'm here for Togak. He was there for her and uh, was there during the service. And we celebrate Minister elect Jaquan Thorpe. Can we thank God for him? Amen. And his impact on this church in Maryland. I, I want to, to, to kind of... Uh, paint a picture for you of how our society is changing. How many of you agree with me that things have changed? The, 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 the world we were born in is not the world we now live in. Can I get a witness? I'm going to say that again. The world we were born in, 10, even Mael and Caleb and all of them, the world they were born in, it has changed. I'm not just moved a little bit. It's like we're living in another dimension. We're living in another state of being. I think Sister Tanisha always reminds me of, of, of a sermon that I preached a few a couple of years ago, and I talked about the whole idea of, of the, the, the changes that are taking place, and they're taking place, and, and they're taking place so rapidly, we can't even keep up with, with the, the changes in laws, changing in rules, and the change of reality. Reality itself is changing. Meaning, what we once accepted as something, you can wake up tomorrow and that which was always what it was is no longer what it was. And none other area has been affected more than the family relationships. We always knew that there were different types of families. We know there were blended families. And a blended family is one where, um, for one reason or other, somebody gets divorced. And we're not hitting against those who are divorced. It is a part of our culture. It is from time immemorial, people have been getting divorced for abuse, for infidelity, for... Uh, in fact, depending on if you're under the temple of Rabbi Shammai or Rabbi Hillel... You could divorce your wife if she burnt the toast. There was the liberal side and there, there was a the conservative side. The conservative side says you can divorce your wife for anything. If she look at you funny, you can divorce her. If you never cook the meal on time, if, 
she never brushed her teeth and kissed you, you could divorce her. It was ridiculous the reasons why you could divorce a woman. But then there was another school that says, no, the only reason you can divorce your wife is for her being unfaithful. In fact, if she was, the, the, the idea behind it, if she was unfaithful, she would be put to death. So it was an automatic removal of the person from your life so you'd be free to marry because that act of infidelity would result in your being put to death. So there was room for divorce. So we're not hated on those who are divorced. It is a painful thing for those who go through it. I cannot imagine my wife coming home and saying, I'm divorcing you. What would I do? Who would kiss me and love me? Who would cook? I am so prejudiced against people who cook. Because I always compare it to my wife's cooking. It never tasted like this. If it was Eric, it wouldn't. And, and, and now, <sighs> divorce is an evil thing. And so, many times, blended families are caused by when you, you get divorced and then you marry somebody else. And so, the children of the previous relationship become your children and now you become a stepmom or a, let me just illustrate it. So, step mom or a step dad or a step uncle or a step. It, it, it means that you are a step away but just close enough. <laughs> and those relationships can be very difficult because some parents, some children don't forget their biological mother or father. And some children are mad that you don't love daddy anymore. And so blended families can be difficult, but they can also be beautiful because sometimes the spouse that you are no longer divorced to has really done you bad and the children wanted you to leave. So you see how complicated a family can be? So, so you have <clears throat> the blended family, then you have um, the traditional nuclear family of what? Mom and father married in the holy uh, wedlock. And children, that's the traditional godly family. But we all know in the Bible that's not how it always was. Hello, Jacob. Back in the day, Grace, homeboy had two wives. And the wives had maids that were his concubines. So the 12 sons of Jacob they had the same father, but four mothers. Talk about trouble in the house. Can I only keep up with one? He had four. And there was this inter-female rivalry. It, it was so bad, I think, uh, Dr. Uh, Sanguinetti alluded to it in his sermon when he talked about how uh, Leah was approached by Rachel. And, and, and Leah said to Rachel, are you with me? We're getting somewhere. Le Leah said to Rachel, I, I, um, I, I need a night with Jacob. But you got to give me, Rachel said, if, I'm gonna, if, if you're going to get a night with him, I need some of your mandrakes. Mandrakes is what we would call Scott. In our day, you know them things you buy in the store, like strong back. It's like strong back for women. It's an aphrodisiac that will allow fertility. So apparently, one of her sons grew the mandrakes, and Rachel knew. So she says, "Okay, I know Jacob loves me, and I can imagine how she was." Just laying it on. He loves me because she, she was beautiful. Are you with me? And, and so she, she laid it on. And if you will 
Give me the mandrake so I can have children. Then I'll allow you one night with the king. Can you imagine that family dynamic? And so what happened was the Joseph being killed by his brothers because of the inter-family rivalry because his mother was different. His mother was loved. Jacob piled it on her and always made fun of her. And Leah, she was cross-eyed and probably not too good looking, but the girl could have kids. She just needed to show up and she showed out. Rachel now, amen, she showed up, but none came out. And so although she was beautiful, she was barren. What do you do when you are beautiful, but you can't produce? So there's this tension in the family. So we have this old patriarchal, uh, uh, this type of family that God allowed because of the cultural appropriations that could be given at that time. But then you also had the families where you had children who were adopted. I've never been adopted, so I don't know. Is there anyone here who's been adopted? Was adopted? Orphaned? Foster home? There's so many different types of families. I have a friend in, in uh, New in Pennsylvania, the junior, God bless him, one of my, my dearest friends. He has adopted two little white girls. He loves them to death. Their parents are strung out on drugs. But I'm here to tell you tonight that these are the human situations that have defined family for centuries. So Jesus now is going to show us by the way he responds to this question. He's going to show us that family is not just blood. There's a stronger connection that he has brought to the reality of relationships that is defined by the spirit. Someone say spirit. Jesus' question was, who is my mother on this Mother's Day? Who are my brothers? He declared, this is how you define mother and brother. But, but this is weird. How can you redefine mother and brother? He is not dissing his mother. He's not saying she is not important. He's just redefining what a spiritual relationship is. In relationship with your blood relatives. Are you with me? He declares for whosoever in verse number 50. Whosoever does the will of my father in heaven. Is my brother and my sister and my mother. Touch somebody say, you are my mother. You are my brother. You are my sister. Not by blood, but by spirit. Spirit is thicker than blood. And I want you to know today that when God saved you, he brought you into a new family. Shout hallelujah. And I'm calling you to understand that the way we treat each other must be the way Jesus treats us. Tell your neighbor, I want to treat you right. Because God treated me right. Is there anybody in this room that God doesn't treat right? When I think of the goodness of Jesus. And all he has done for me. My soul cries out hallelujah when I think of the goodness of Jesus. When I think of how he's bringing me through. The way God treats me. If God treated me the way I treated him, I'd be dead. I just need one witness on this side because I know this side is holy. Hallelujah. If God treated us the way we treated him. Glory be. I'm so glad he doesn't treat me the way I treat him. And what he's calling us to do today is to look at each other differently. 
Tell somebody, start looking at me differently. Start not, don't treat me because I didn't come from the same mother. Don't treat me because we don't have the same last name. Oh, for he has made, hallelujah, of all nations one blood. If you realize that the mere fact that you're human, we're all brothers and sisters anyway. But he has now made that family tie, Sharon. Glory be to God. It is thicker than the blood relationship. You saw it at the funeral of your son. When people from near and far came. When I, when I was driving up to, that, to, to, to Woodlawn. I don't mean to, to, to race up anything. But when I drove up to Woodlawn, I was at the head of the pack. I wanted to pull off and see the number of cars that came to Ashok. Funeral. I've been passing over 20 years. I'm telling you, that's the biggest funeral I've ever been to. Because people showed up who were not related by blood, but they were related by spirit. We need to begin to reevaluate our relationships as Christians beyond the name of the church beyond the physicality of our coming together we need to begin to see each other the way Jesus sees us are you honest what I'm saying my first point is we must expand write this down spirit is thicker than blood as we ex. Is, is, is revealed, the word here is revealed, is revealed as we expand our understanding of family. Someone say family. Okay, I am a dad, hallelujah. And where's my daughter? That is my daughter. She is biologically mine. I told everyone that she has somehow gotten, very few children do this. She has gotten the best from both of us. All those qualities that are good in me and her, Robin got very little of our faults. She has them because she ain't perfect. But her hard work, her devotion... She's smart. She got it from her mom. Her beauty. It's an amalgamation of both of us. She is my blood. She's my child. But where, where's Maya? Come here, Maya. Maya is not my physical daughter. But last night, I looked at Maya as she ministered. Come on up here. And I look at this young woman. You all remember little Mayel? She is now 12 years old. And as much as Robin is my daughter, I see Mayel just the same. Is she pretty? She's so cute. Give her a hand, everybody. Go to God. He's going to give you $20. We must expand our understanding of family. Say expand your understanding of family. You are my brother. You are my sister. Because Jesus now, when he says, who is my mother? The first thing that comes to mind, how could Jesus diss his mother like that? You would think that if he said my mama, he would say, let her in. He used it as a teaching moment. It's a teaching moment. To tell them that his disciples had now been elevated to a place of prominence. Now are we the sons of God. For by one spirit have we been all baptized into the same. The same spirit have 
we all. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are, CJ, the sons of God. So your sonship has caused you to have a relationship that is thicker than your blood relationship. Are you understanding what I'm saying today? God wants us to realize that we have a responsibility as Christians to love our brothers, sisters, brothers and sisters the same way we love our own family. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, Mother Beckford, I don't just see you as Sister Beckford, as a sister. I see you like I would see my own mother. I would love you. I'd be willing to do for you what I would be willing to do for my own flesh and blood. I, I was never adopted, but I was watching this YouTube video of this, these two boys and this white couple, um, and I thought of Susan and Mike, and there are these two little black boys from Haiti. They adopted one, and then they realized that he had a bigger brother, and the story is long, so I'll make it short, but they went to the court the day of the adoption and the little boy, the, big, the bigger one, he said, I want to be a part of that family because of how I've seen them treat my little brother. And the judge was moved to tears as he listened to these African-American so-called, these Haitian kids gravitate to this white couple who had treated them like they came out of her own belly. I think that if we begin to realize the spiritual connections can be so powerful that they're even stronger than blood connections. I have developed some relationships. Um, my, my dear friend and brother, Pastor Williams, um, I was... In, I was doing something in my house and we heard the doorbell. You know, sometimes you expect certain people to come to your house. And so, you know, that's probably Gayan or Debrisha or who else comes to our house all the time? One of those kids, Jada, or Robin's friends. So, my wife said to me, I owe that. I said, oh, I know why I never ran. I was in the bathroom at the time. I was busy, praise the name of the Lord. And so the doorbell rang, um, Eric, and um, I hear, Wah! It was Sister Arlene, and about an hour before, they were talking on the phone, and Sister Arlene said nothing about them coming or being in Orlando. So when she showed up, man, I came out and said, you bad for that. <laughs> Their presence at our home unexpected brought so much joy. Can I tell you, he is not my biological brother, but there's nobody closer on this earth apart from my wife than Pastor Williams. Can we begin reorient our minds that the person sitting beside you is not just Sister Simpson or Sister Dougie or Brother Malva, but they are part of me. There's a connection that is thick. My God Almighty. Mike, there's a connection between us. Susan, there's a connection that goes beyond the color of our skin or the content of what we know, but there's something that connects us that is deep. Some shall glory, 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 glory. Spirit is thicker than blood. Oh, hallelujah. Love and a bond can be formed within non-biological families like adoption. And can you imagine the bond that has been formed by us as members of the body of God? For by one spirit, someone say one spirit. 
shout hallelujah one spirit Somebody shout one spirit hallelujah 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 my 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 understanding of family is expanding as i realize that as your pastor amen there's a bond i see every member of this church amen as my own child or daughter i will do for any of you what i do for my children Can somebody shout glory? glory? I go to your graduations. I come to your baby blessings. Amen. I've been in hospital rooms holding, amen, the hands of people after they've had, amen, babies. Oh, God Almighty, I've been to court with some of you. Amen. Written letters for children to get scholarships, get jobs. You are my family. Shout hallelujah. We must begin to see each other as a family beyond the titles. Come on, Erica, preach with me. I'm not just pastor. I'm your father. I'm your brother. It paid my heart. Glory be to God. Not to be able to stand with Sister Marine, but we weren't otherwise tied up. But Jake one in Maryland, at the heart of the Father, say, I got to be there. Because spirit is thicker than blood. Oh God, shout hallelujah. When your mother and your father forsake me, the Bible says the Lord, hallelujah. And how does the Lord take you up? Hallelujah. He takes you up by using the brothers and sisters around you. So Sister Green, I know you got some challenges. But let me tell you, there's some young women and young men in this church who would love to call you Mother Green. Hallelujah. So if you're estranged from your children, if your children don't like you for whatever reason, if you're not connected with your parents, there's a mother in here. There's a father in here. There's a son is here. There's a sister in here. Somebody glory be to God. Hallelujah. Mother, mother, mother Beckford. Amen. As Michael is going through this, we are going through it with you. Hallelujah. Someone say, help me, Jesus. Family understanding needs to be expanding. Hallelujah. Not only does it need to be expanded, we need to see that what God is calling for us is that this relationship is defined not by blood, but by obedience to the will of God. This is why, beloved, you have these admonitions in scripture that when people go outside of God's will, they cut themselves off from being called sons and daughters. Let me tell you, there's a scripture in Mark, I struggle with Erica. Where Paul, where Paul says, listen, can I just take one second, I got five more minutes. Paul says to the church at Rome, I have a big problem with this text because of the, the severity of the admonition. You know what I'm talking about, Erica. You preach with me, right? You, you preach with me, right? All right. Look, look at verse, um, verse 17. Look at verse 16. But pull that up. Amen. Come on, wake up back there. Romans 16, verse 17. Greet one another with a what? Come on, greet me, Pastor Paul. Holy kiss. All right, that's a holy kiss. This is an unholy kiss right here. If I kiss Pastor Forbes like that, that's unholy. That kiss is reserved for Erica, but how she kissed me was holy. So let me make that very clear, CJ. CJ, you can do any one of those to Kira, but you can't do that to my wife. All right. Let's go outside. <laughs> the churches of Christ greet you. Verse 17. What was verse 17 says? Now I what? I beseech you, brethren, mark them. Which cause what? Divisions and offenses. Contrary to the doctrine. Which you have learned and avoid them. The scriptures 
command us to avoid people who are disobedient and refuse to repent. If you have a brother and sister in the church, the Bible says, whosoever does the will of God, he is my mother, he is my father. But if you have a member of a church who is walking in disobedience, refuses to repent, God says avoid them. Michael Jackson did a song called One Bad Apple Don't Fall the Whole <laughs> Y'all remember that song? <laughs> One Bad Apple Don't Spawn the Whole Bunch Cup. All right, Mike. But what happens when you put one bad apple in a bunch of apples? There are some things that have come across songs that are pure lie. Because that apple with that worm is going to jump on another apple. And if you don't allow, if you, if you, don't, if you don't take care of that one bad apple, it's going to spoil the whole bunch. Brothers and sisters, we cannot be arms up with people's mess. Don't be afraid to tell Nikki, Nikki, you're wrong, girl. I love you, but you're wrong. I got I to gotta say, Nikki, I love you too much to t not tell you the truth. Whatever it is, it may be your dress is too short. Nikki, the dress, you know, see that you hold a show. I must be able to say it in love without you getting offended. Can we just be honest with each other for a change? You're not looking too good. You look like you need some rest. When I say that to you, am I trying to make you feel bad? No, I may be trying to save your life. Who is my brother? He that does the will of God from the heart. Say it again, Pastor. From the heart. The, 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 the idea in the text is that Jesus wants to tell them that my brother and my sister are those who are conforming to the will of God and deserve my attention. They are in a circle of acceptance and th there is an inseparable link between obedience to God's will and belonging to the spiritual family of Christ. You cannot say, brothers and sisters, that you are a child of God and you continually walk in disobedience. Can I get a witness up in here? Who is my mother? Say that do the will of God. What is the will of God? The word of God. What is the will of God? Do that is right. Worship the Lord with all of your heart. I am looking for the day before this year is out. When we enter to talk that the worship is so strong, we got to tell people to sit down and keep quiet. But the worship is so strong. Hallelujah. Can we go back to the times, brothers and sisters, when you come to church, the first thing you do is you come to the altar and pray? Can we have more reverence for the house of God? Can we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and come into his court with praise? Can we get off our cell phones and get our face into the presence of God and ask God to bless the service? Can I have somebody worship with me? Worship the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your might. Come on, Mike, let's give God everything in this season. We don't know how much longer we got left to, to live, but I feel revival coming. I feel revival. It's got to come. It's got to come. Oh, God Almighty, healing and miracles. Too many of us are sick. Too many of us are looking like we don't have nothing going for us. But lift up your head. You could be dead. Oh, look at COVID. COVID killed millions of people.
people and you're still here. You should have a praise. COVID killed your friends, kill your uncles and your aunties, and you're still alive. Give God some praise. That's the will of God to worship God. Oh God, can we say away with this with this laziness, this come and the chill out? You can't chill out in the presence of God. Come with a worship. Do I have a church up in here tonight? Worship the Lord with all of your heart. Can we take a praise break? We got to get our own musician. Can we get a praise break? Can we get a praise break? Can we get a praise break? Stand to your feet. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all the will of God is not just obeying the letter, but it's the spirit. There's something, Brother Glenn, about being engaged with the spirit. It is the spirit that connects us. The spirit the spirit. Susan, you're my sister, girl. Oh, yata. Michael, you're my brother. I love you. And God is going to use you in this house. Both of you, God is going to raise up to do great and mighty things. Shout to the voice of trauma. Come on, deacons. Come on, ministers. The will of God. The will, the will. Let me tell you, the will of God, Georgia, is more than paying your tithes. That's part of it. But let me tell you, there's something about attentiveness to the word of God. I'm almost closing. There is a story about Mary and Martha where Jesus shows up in Bethany. And the Bible says, Mary was encumbered with a lot of stuff. Oh, hallelujah. She was busy in the kitchen. She was cooking. She was frying fish. Oh, God, she was frying festival. She was frying chicken. She was frying chicken, Jamar. Hallelujah. She was frying chicken. That's a private inside joke right there. Oh, come on again. Hallelujah. He was frying chicken. She was just so busy. Do you know, you can, you can look the part Show up in your hat, show up in your, you know, show up. You're playing your congas, you're playing your drums, but it's all a show. You want to impress Jesus, but you're not impressed by him. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, Sister Sharon, there's something. The Bible says Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. And every word that came from his mouth, he drank it like water from the spring. Let me tell you, the people of God in this hour who are going to make it, those who are connected to the word of God. Because a shake in his coming, Scott. Everything that will be shaken. Persecution is coming. Persecution is coming. Can I sound it loud and clear? Christians are going to be persecuted based on the laws that have been passed. But if you're connected to the word of God, Oh, tell them about what are you building your house on? If you're building your house on sand, it's going to fall. But build your house upon the rock, which will the winds and the waves. Lift up your hand and worship God. Can I get us two more minutes? Worship God. Someone says symphony. I need some and I need some drummers. I need some tambourine players. I need some people to clap my hands. Here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna clap your hands over here when I tell you. You're gonna shout hallelujah when I tell you. You're going to shout glory here. Are you going to say praise the Lord? Are you just going to make some noise in the back? Hallelujah. You're going to play the tambourines? You're going to play the drums? You're going to do what? What are you going to do? 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 Are you just do anything you want? Glory be to God. One of the things that I, I love, I love the finer things of life. That's why I got married to Erica. I love the finer things of life. Do you, uh, one of these days, 
I'm going to go to one of those orchestra. Um, put on some, some symphony music. Tchaikovsky's, Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker. Put on the Nutcracker. Put on the Nutcracker. Do you know what God wants us to be? Like a, a, a symphony. In, 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 in the symphony, you got flute. You got, you got percussion. You got the, 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 you got all these, you got the violin, you got the tuba, you got the oboe, the oboe, yeah. The, there's a thing called the oboe. Clap your hands. Jesus. God wants us to be like a symphony. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Clap your hands, holy people. Let your voices ring because the Spirit of the Lord is coming upon the church. But the church has got to be on one accord. Tell somebody, get in order. Get in order. Ushers, ush. Deacons, deek. Drummers, drum. Look at Ziani. He's learning. He's, he's not there yet. But he's getting in position. We need somebody to get in position. Tell somebody, get in position. Get in position. Get back into your place, CJ. Get back into your place. Get back into your place. Because we are wanting to be a symphony. Who is my brother? Jesus wasn't dissing his mother. He was saying there's another family relationship that is superior in his intent. Because he came to seek and to save that which was last. And all of us are a part of God's end time program. Tell him that you're important. You're important. Every orchestra has a conductor. He's not just there moving his hands. He's giving directions. Now what if the, the lady playing the violin say, Hey, no. I'm going to play my own thing. Some of you are playing your own thing. Every now and again we hear, okay, have you ever been into a service and you heard a sound that wasn't right? It was a self-made sound. It was a self-aggrandizing sound. It was a sound that wanted to attract attention to itself. If you are in the spirit business, we must not be in it to big up ourselves. Grace, this is about exalting the Christ. It's about making God's thing look good. Did you see those girls dance today? You can see them growing. They're not there, but they're getting there. But you know what God is telling me, girls? You need a, a re-baptism of the Holy Ghost. 
He all comes to the altar, the four years. There's something about the Holy Ghost. The last Sunday is the day of Pentecost, and I want all of us to get re-baptized. He's coming. He's getting there. My heart is so pleased to see Ziani on those drums. And Israel. Put your hands together for them. We are building an orchestra that is making a sound that when the heavens hear it, it releases angels. Come on, Erica, help me. Oh, over the next six months, I'm, I'm asking God to release some angels. Healing and miracles shall take place in this house. Mando ho shita. Diseases and sickness shall fall off. Cancers, all type of diseases shall bound. Relationships that are broken shall be restored. When we come in one accord, somebody shall one accord. Have you ever felt, met somebody, and all of a sudden you feel a connection with them? Does that connection with that person invalidate your connection with your regular brother and sister? Do you have any people in your life that are as close to you as your own mother and father and brothers and sisters? That sister in Kissimmee who I'm talking. She's like your blood sister. You do anything for her, right, sister Mamala P? Do you know anybody who you, you do anything for and they're not your blood? Raise your hand. So it tells me that there are people who can come into your life that can transcend the blood barrier. And I'm telling you what Jesus was teaching when he asked who is my mother is that there's a connection in the Holy Ghost that makes us so joined, Sister Ruby, that nothing can break us. Hold the hand of the person beside you. I want some women, mothers, Weber, come. Sister Simpson, come, come. Sister Scott, come, come. Mother P, come. I want you to lay hands. Sister Kizzy, come. Lay hands on these young women. Let me tell you. The flesh can move. But there is something that can be released through the anointing the flesh can get. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? The spirit of God is necessary for a move of God. Anybody hungry for a move of God? Let's worship. Let's worship. Mando hota, pray in the Holy Ghost. If you need a brand new touch, if you have gotten out of connection, loose the hand of the person that you hold and run to this altar. God is releasing a fresh anointing right now. If you if you feel yourself drifting, if you're not where you should be here, hando banda, come come to this altar. Leke baba baba sata, haya kato boshe. Declare, I am the righteousness of God. I'm declaring today that my sins don't define me, but my birth in Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. God baptized these girls. From today. Worship spirit is thicker than blood. I told over the relationship that God wants to establish.
Worship, worship, worship. Worship, worship. Where's Marine? Makatada Bahaya. Come, Sister Marine, come pray, come pray. Worship God, worship God. Worship Him. Worship the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is moving in this house. Give Him glory right now. Let's cry out to God. Pray for them, pray for them. Hey, Aka, Ho Satai. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Strengthen your people, Lord. Strengthen your people, Lord. Nekando, Malabahashote. Strengthen your people, Lord. Raise up the spirit of worship. Makada, baptize these young people afresh with the Holy Ghost. Give them a desire. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 cry out to him for the next 20 seconds. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Worship him. Say, Lord, give me a desire. Can you just ask God right now? Please, I'm begging you. Ask God, give me a holy desire. Give me a fresh touch. Jesus, help me to find you again. Jesus. Jesus. Come on, signs. Come on, saints. Worship. He loves you. 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 Watch him. Watch him. He loves you. 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 He's trying to reach you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Deacon Clark, come and pray. He's calling, Bridget, he's calling you. Hold on, Brother Limar. There is no shame. There's no shame in getting weak. There's shame in knowing you're weak and remaining weak. Strength is being released at this altar right now. Come, come, come. Pastor, do I have to come to the altar? The altar is a place of exchange where you give him your weakness and you, he gives you his strength. Oh God, don't care what our people are going to say. They have no heaven or hell to put you. Reach out and touch the Lord. As he passes by, you find he's not too busy to hear your hearts cry. Uh, young ladies cry out, say, Lord, help me. Cry out, Neely. Cry out, Nisi. Cry out. Cry out. Say, Lord, help me. Say, come on, Maya. Say, Lord, help me. Lord, Lord, Lord. In the last days, Grace, I shall pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Mama house is coming. The devil can't stop it. The devil can't stop it. If you want to be baptized today, raise your hand. If you want to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you want to give your life to Jesus, today is the day. Today is the day. If you want to say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. Deliver me. Emando Shanta Lamande. Strengthen. Jesus, 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 Haya Baba Hasha, Jesus. Can I ask you, everyone, just to open your mouth in prayer right now and say, Lord, help me. Everyone, in the sound of my voice, to stop for 60 seconds and say, Lord, help me. 
Draw me nearer to the cross. Draw me nearer, Lord. Lord, I need a brand new touch. If you're watching online, say, Lord, draw me nearer. If you're at this altar, oh God, oh God, oh God. Say, Lord, help me. Lord, Lord, help me. Come, deacon. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we thank you, O oh Lord Jesus. Your word have came forth, O oh Lord Jesus. And we have heard you, O oh Lord Jesus. We have heard your voice, O oh Lord Jesus. Father God, we thank you for your word that came forth this morning, O oh Lord. Let it bring forth transformation. Let it bring forth changes, O oh Lord Jesus. Let we not just be hearers of the word, O oh Lord Jesus. But let we be doers of the word, O oh Lord Jesus. Father God, we thank you for the word, O oh Lord Jesus, that comes to bind us together, O oh Lord Jesus. We thank you for the word that comes to transform our life, O oh Lord Jesus. We thank you for the word that come to cut us, O oh Lord Jesus. We thank you for that word that came to break down, O oh Lord Jesus. The word that came to separate and to bring back together, O oh Lord Jesus. We thank you, O oh Lord Jesus, for this truly is the day, O oh Lord Jesus, that you have made. Let us rejoice, O oh Lord Jesus, and be glad, O oh Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for greater is you, O oh Lord, that is in us than he that is in the world, O oh Father God. Father God, make us one, O oh Lord Jesus. Make us one heart, O oh Lord Jesus. One faith to proclaim your mighty word, O oh Lord Jesus. Father God, we know that there is healing in that word. We know, O oh Lord Jesus, that there is strength in your word, O oh Lord Jesus. Who is my brothers? Who is my sister, O oh Lord Jesus? But he that does it your will, O oh Lord Jesus. We are banded together, O oh Lord Jesus. We are banded, O oh Lord Jesus, by your spirit, O oh Lord Jesus. Father God, bring us close together, O oh Lord Jesus, as one united family, O oh Lord Jesus. United, O oh Lord Jesus, under your shed blood, O oh Father God. Father God, we thank you, O oh Lord Jesus, because of your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love and your kindness, O oh Lord Jesus. Break down, O oh Lord Jesus, everything that is in us that is not of you. Wash it away from us. Cleanse us from our sins, O oh Lord Jesus, and our iniquities. We desire, O oh Lord Jesus, to be a vessel that you are able to work through, O oh Lord Jesus. Mold us and make us, O oh Lord Jesus, into the man, into the woman that you have created us to be. We thank you, O oh Father God, for this day. We thank you for your word, O oh Lord Jesus, that came forth, O oh Lord Jesus, like a rushing wind, O oh Lord Jesus. Father God, I pray, O oh Lord Jesus, that we we'll stand firm in your word, O oh Lord Jesus, while the storms of life may come raging in, O oh Lord Jesus. We will not be moved, O oh Lord Jesus. We will not be moved, O oh Lord Jesus, because we are standing in your word, O oh Father God. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord Jesus. Take not your anointed away from us, O oh Lord Jesus. But make we be led, O oh Lord Jesus, by your spirit that is within us, O oh Father God. We thank you, O oh Lord Jesus, for your word that came forth. Father God, not, let me not leave this place, O oh Lord, and forget your word, O oh Lord Jesus. Your word that came to cut, O oh Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Your word that came to separate, O oh Lord Jesus. Jesus. Your word that came to build us up, O oh Lord Jesus. God. Your word that came to open our heart, O oh Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for it, O oh Lord. Have your way, O oh Lord Jesus. Have your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we praise the Lord, everyone? 
Come on and give God the glory. Come on and give God the glory on this Mother's Day. Tell your neighbor, you're my brother, you're my sister, you're my mother. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The last Sunday of this month is Pentecost Sunday. I want every seat filled on the last Sunday of this month. And I'm challenging every member to take at least one person. You are mandated. Take your mother, take your brother. Go get them on the byway. See somebody on the, uh, on the say, promise them $5 to come, whatever. Get them in the house. Someone said, we're going to fill every seat. Come on, tell someone, we're going to fill every seat. Fill every seat. Now, before you go, amen, before we set a benediction, some of you came in late. We want to give you an opportunity to be a blessing to this house with your tithes, your offerings. So I want to ask you right now, and if you felt, feel led to be a blessing, praise God, amen, to this house, you can give again, praise the Lord. So we're going to ask you to come right now. If you came in late, you want to be a blessing, amen. Um, I, don't, I don't do this very often, but I feel led right now to receive an offering for our first lady. I'm going to ask you to get another offering for me. And I'm going to receive an offering for our first lady. I want you to be a blessing to her and to sow into her life. Sister Young, as we call her sometimes, is such an example of faith. Do you see her faith being lived out right in front of you? Amen. So give me another basket. We're going to sow a seed into her life today. Somebody say, bless her Lord. Bless her Lord. Amen. I'm going to sow the first seed. AP, praise the Lord Jesus. Come with that basket. Quickly, Sister Ingrid, you're moving. Moving. No, no, this is, this is the, just to those who came in late. This is for Sister Young over here. Amen. I'm going to start this off and off with $50. Praise the Lord Jesus. Come. Praise the Lord Jesus. Come right now. Come. Be a blessing to her. Amen. So she can go out and get her nails and her feet and uh, sauna and amen. Um, anything she wants to do, take a trip to Paris, glory be to God. Let's just sow into her. Thank you, Susan. I see Susan coming with that $5,000 check. Glory be to God. Amen. Let's, let's be a blessing to the house of the Lord and to our first lady on this Mother's Day. Is she worth it? Is she worthy of an offering from the members of this church? Amen. So, I um, also like to remind you, if you'd like to go to Pastor Hyde this Thursday, I have secured a vehicle. Amen. Not a big one, but because right now we only have four people, at least three more people. If you want to go to Pastor Hyde this, this Thursday. Pastor Forbes, I think your name is already on the list. All right. I don't think Mother Reed is going to be here. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's, let's give. And if you'd like to give... So if you are given to the Carazor's Glory Conference, the, the Zell is C-O-A-G-2004 at gmail.com. So please do that. Oh, prayer breakfast tickets. Please, please, if you have not yet gotten your prayer breakfast tickets, today is the day. They are only $65. Amen. I think I have mine over here. If you have not yet gotten a prayer breakfast ticket, you can get one from me first. Buy one from me first. Sister Grace, if you need one, come see me. Praise the name of the Lord. I got 44, 45 to 49. Praise the Lord Jesus. If you need a prayer breakfast ticket. And let's be a blessing to the house of the Lord. Please stand, everyone. I trust you receive something from the Lord today. Come on, Caleb. Come with your offering. Come with your offering. If you still would like to give, the, the, the giving is still open. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for sowing into the life of your daughter. We give, pray, Sister um, Davine, you coming again? Amen. I see you coming. Glory be to God. And if you're given by Zell, please just designate it so we'll know, amen, that you're given to AP. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sister Nikki. You, you, you come late, but you're still coming. Amen. Oh, that's Pastor Forbes. Amen. Come, Mother Green. Amen. If you're giving, let's put 4AP in the, in the notation. Yes. Amen. That's right. You don't need an envelope. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, so, so. Um, also, on Friday, come up here, Sister Clark. Um, Sister Doet, on behalf of the Fine Arts Department, they're having a movie night. 
and the tickets are only five dollars only five u.s dollars amen so you could come and get your tickets uh give me give me um give me four I said four. You gave me eight. No, that's that one. Um, it's double. Oh, it's double. Uh, how much is this? Okay, one for me, one for my wife, one for Robin, and there's a free one right here. First come, first serve. It's a seven o'clock. So, so this don't cover the cost of the food? No, sir. All right. Can we stand, everybody? Is, there, is everybody, has everybody given? I have one free ticket I'd like to bless somebody with. Sister, no, no, Sister Marine, I didn't get to come to your mom's funeral. I'm going to bless you with a ticket. Free entrance. Can we praise the Lord? Can you do me a favor? If you're standing beside somebody, let's give them a hug. 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 Amen. Oh, sorry. We have patties for sale. They're two. How much are they? How much are the patties? Three dollars on the patties. Please support the ministry of Carols of His Glory. Give somebody a hug right now. Give somebody a hug. Brother Glenn, please don't hug Sister Kizzy. You hug her every day. Come on, hug somebody. All my friends on Facebook or YouTube, I give you a hug. I love you. All right, let's say the benediction. You can hug after I'm finished. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, give thee peace. Have a wonderful Mother's Day. Take your mom out. And for those of you who still haven't gotten your Mother's um, Day gift yet, you can go see Sister Barton. She has some stuff. Is it raining outside? <laughs>